place to be so far. I'm going to go ahead and look at our bulletin and see what's going to be going on. Today is our faith promise offering. Please allow God to direct you um, what He would have you to give. Um, it's also our food pantry Sunday. The man, uh, uh, the food pantry Sunday, all are invited to give Diana Bennett a dollar to help those in need. By way of announcements, there will be no choir practice today. No choir practice today. Please be sure to check your mailboxes for cards, and please do that. There are quite a few cards out there. Last time I peeked, lots of people hadn't picked up their Christmas cards yet, so please be sure to get out there. You might find prizes in there for all you know. It's hard to tell. And then a New Year's plan. I tried to think of a clever new phrase, a slogan to inspire the next 365 days, a motto to live by this coming new year, but the catchy words fell flat to my ears. And then I heard the still small voice saying, consider this simply daily choice. With each new dawn and close of a day, make new your resolve to trust and obey. Don't look back caught in regret or dwell in sorrow of dreams unmet. Don't stare forward uh, uh, anchored, in, anchored by fear. No, live in this moment, for I am here. I am all you need, everything I am. You are held secure by my strong hand. Give me this one thing, your all in all. Into my grace, let yourself fall. So at last I'm ready, I see the way. It's, a daily, it's to daily follow, trust and obey. I enter the new year armed with a plan to give him my everything, all that I am. Like that. We did have a card come in. I'm going to go ahead and read that before I forget to. It says, thank you. To my church family, may God return to you the kindness you have shown to me. Thank you so much for the Christmas gift. I appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to serve the Lord in this way. Love and prayers, Miss Debbie Taylor. Can you remember her and her prayers? We appreciate her. Um, other than forget the ladies' prayer group on Tuesdays at 1030. All, all you ladies are welcome to come out and join that. Do we have any other announcements that need to be made this morning? No? Okay, do we have any testimonies or specials this morning? Amen. 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 Amen, Terry. Anyone else? Amen. Amen, Mark. You and else?
Any songbirds this morning? Yeah. We'll go on. Prayer requests that were written in the back. Lois Lawson asked prayer for lost. Also remember Tracy, Scott, and Kyle and Hadley. Um, Bertha McMillian asked prayer for Sister Barbara Meadows, my children, and grandchildren. Any other spoken prayer requests? We'll go ahead and start right here. Bond and right measure. <clears throat> and I have a special request. Please pray. Okay. Others? <clears throat> Thankful for answered prayer for getting back home safe. Continue to remember Peggy, my sister with COVID. Last night I was talking to her on the phone and her husband walked in the room shivering with a fever. So he's probably got it too and he's, he's got bad lungs anyway. Remember the family of Nancy Johnson. Uh, remember Mike and Nancy passed away last Sunday. And uh, my sister, she has infection in her feet, in one of her feet, <laughs> a foot, uh, three different places. She's a diabetic. She's lost a, a toe and a part of the toe, so this thing just keeps flaring up. Others? Says they have COVID and the spiritual needs in our thing. You know, we're here. Prayer for my family, please. Prayer for your family? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. My uncle, he's the deputy sheriff here, and he was just admitted with um, double pneumonia and COVID, and he's not doing good. We're not sure what today really even holds so okay. and, and my stepdad please yeah and our mother and my sister and Amber's sister and her boyfriend okay. any others remember our nation in crisis okay. I'm on my way John I'd like the church to remember my dad for his salvation, um, my brother and his family, uh, just all our lost family members, on both mine and Joel's families, aunts and uncles, and just continue to pray for us also, please. Okay. Anyone else? Me on this side? Still remember me and my sons and Roger's children. And also, um, Donnie Atkins, he did get out of the hospital to go to his mother's funeral on Monday. They did take him to Morgantown. They did put a feeding tube in. He's had two heart attacks, and he's on a ventilator. Mm -hmm. And his family really needs prayer. During this time, his wife Susan lost a sister in North Carolina. She had had a couple strokes a couple years ago, so she just kept going downhill. So they really need your prayers. Also, David Walker, um, he's in Texas. They had to put him in the hospital. He had a stomach bleed, and they had to put a feeding tube in him until his stomach heals, hopefully. And then my son Kenny's classmate, Stephanie Coleman, passed away with COVID. So please remember that family. I have a very special and spoken one, my cousin Janice Ross. She stays in pain all the time now. So she really wants y'all to pray for her. And I also have another unspoken one, too, please. Anyone else? Brother Josh, would you leave some prayer? Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for your many blessings. I thank you, Father, for a new year and the opportunity to be in your house. I pray, Lord, for all these different prayer requests that were mentioned this morning, loved ones and family members. And friends, Father, Lord, you know these requests. And I ask, Lord, that you please work in each and every one of these situations. Please bless the remainder of the service. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
Anyone else with anything else? Don't want to cut you off. Nope, have we had any anniversaries in the last week? No? Nope. All righty. Well, we'll have our birthday song. If you've had a birthday in the last week, we'd like to come forward and celebrate. You're more than welcome. If not, everybody stand, greet one another, and sing number... 156. 156. seated and I invite you to open your Bible up to the book of James. Book of James. If you could turn there and we will take a few moments and study out the book of James. Uh, this time of year is <clears throat> it's nice. I like starting a new day. Now I can't uh, I don't know how you are but if I've determined that I've not been successful in a day, then I really long to go to sleep at nighttime and start all over the next day. <laughs> and I, I love my mornings. I love starting up, writing my little list, and, and so forth, and scheduling out my day. And starting a new year is similar to that, um, that we get a fresh start and new beginning, if you will. And uh, you get to think about, well, I'm going to do things differently this year than what I did Last year, I want to accomplish some things. Someone has said, well, that if you fail to plan, then it is a plan to fail. And so I, I think we're in days, and, and I'm hoping that even through the month of January, that we as a church family can talk more and more about, as far as us as a church, about our goals or plans for us as a church or as a congregation. But more specifically, I'm, I'm talking about you. What, what are you what is your goals or plans for this year? Um, <clears throat> so I'm not into that. Okay, well don't just tune me out or just sit there and humor me you know, for the rest of the service. But I, I personally feel that setting goals and making plans is a very important part of living life. And it's uh, showing you want to live, showing you, you, have a, you have a desire to live and you're embracing the life that God has given you. And so I encourage you to set some goals. And I, it doesn't have to necessarily be grandiose. I have a tendency to set bigger goals than what I probably should, goals that are really difficult to accomplish. And that's, uh, you know, my wife tempers me on that. But set some goals. You ought to set a goal to read your Bible through this year. That's a good goal to set. 
He said, I'm going to read my Bible. I get it. I get it. But if a goal helps to motivate you, especially in those times when you are um, maybe um, you're not real motivated to read. <laughs> and so it's good to look back over the course of the year and say, yeah, I finished that. I read my Bible through. Maybe you don't like to read your Bible through in a year, but you'd rather memorize so many passages or just do a good solid book study on some book. But set a goal. Uh, Brother Phillips, who mentored me, he, he was 65 years old. He said, Here's, here, learn a new language. He gave me a whole list. He said, these are things I'm working on. He was 65, 67 at the time. He said, I'm working on learning a new language. He said, do that. He had all kinds of things. He said, don't stop living. And so I encourage you, don't stop living. You're still alive. God's placed you here. Set some goals. Set some goals. Make a plan. Look over the course this year and, and categorically think about your finances. Think about, you know, your work for God. Uh, think about uh, your health. That's one we oftentimes neglect. Um, what can you do to improve your overall health, to help yourself, help yourself with that as being a good steward with the body and the life that God has given you? Think about your relationships um, with uh, your children or aunts, uncles, your wife, your husband, and what am I going to do in regards to that? Now, if you make goals, then it's probably likely that you're going to spend time on them, and you're certainly going to accomplish a lot more than you would otherwise. Uh, maybe you're nagged, you're nagging, there's a naggingness or guilt that you have about people and your family that do not know Christ. Make a goal, make a goal to go through and witness to all those folks in your family that do not know Christ. Make a list out, begin to pray over that, seek for opportunities and times so you can go and talk to those ones about the Lord. Make some goals. I think there's a very very, very important for all of us today. James chapter 4 is where we're at today. We're going to talk about this. Uh, verse number 13 says this, Go to now, James 4. Sorry, I'll give you a moment to find it. Are you there? Say amen. James 4, 13, Go to now ye that say, Tomorrow or today we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Let's pray. Father, God is pleased as we go through our lesson, our Sunday school time. We pray for your blessings upon the teachers as they work with our young people. And may, Lord, we in turn be more cultured to have a godly life and a, a, to be more appropriate in our living before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to hold your finger there and turn back to Luke in chapter number 12. Luke chapter 12, because we're going to see a story here of a man who did make some plans. He looked at his present, considered his future, you know, and uh, he made some plans. Luke chapter 12 and verse number 16. I like to refer to this man as uh, Mr. Bill Bigger Barn Man, the Bill Bigger Barn Man. In uh, Luke chapter 12 and verse number 16. Are you there? Say amen. Amen. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for, for many years. Take thine ease, eat, and drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then whose shall all shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself, and is not rich toward God. You can go back to Philippians 2. This is a parable that Christ was teaching, illustrating many things, uh, or shall I say several things, but one of which was plans that were being made, in regards to this man's life, his resources, but he did not consider God. And so we go back to Luke chapter number five, James, or James chapter four, I'm sorry. James, in turn, is likewise giving us a little bit of instruction about this idea of making plans or setting goals, organizing or looking to the future. 
And he gives us some instruction, I believe, out of verse number 13 down to verse number 17 to help us. And what, I, what James is pointing out is mistakes that people make. Similarly is what we read in Luke chapter 12. Mistakes that people make in the process of setting goals or making plans with their life. Verse number 13, notice here if you will, Go to now ye that say, Tomorrow or today we shall go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. James, in turn, is not necessarily faulting this person or persons, these persons, because they are making plans. In fact, it's probably a good plan. And it's good. They make a plan. But they, in turn, were saying in verse number 13, we'll, we'll go to this city. And uh, if you could look at a map and, and, and lay out a map, they, the, the word continues here means that they, they had plans to go from one city to another. They were uninterrupted plans. We're going to go here, then we go here, we go there, we go there, we go here. And they had all these plans of where they were going to go, how they're going to administrate this, this order, this structure. Similarly, uh, similarly, we do that. Uh, whenever I was um, a missionary prior to going to the field, I visited many churches. I laid out a calendar, laid out a map, um, and I in turn began to call the churches and ask them to consider allowing our family to come and to, you know, to explain to them what God has laid on our heart. And I laid it out. And then it was February the 5th, I'll be here. February the 12th, I'll be here. You know, February the 19th, I'll be here. March the 3rd, I'll be here. And I laid it all out that way. Well, that's what he's referring to. You're making a plan of what you're going to do, where you're going to go. I'm going to go to this city, then I'll go to this city, and go to that city, and then go to this city, and go to that city. Well, the mistake that's being made here, look if you will in verse number 13. Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we shall go into a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell. Now read the next three words. Ready? Begin. And get gain. That reveals what their whole intention was. And what we see in that, see with this, is that they really were making plans without God. Just like, just as that we read about the man in Luke chapter number 12 who was called a fool. He made plans, he made plans without considering God. And so the idea of making a plan is certainly not wrong. The idea of making a plan to organize your life and to have productivity certainly is not wrong. But this is why they were making plans. And their plans did not consider God at all. God was not a part of those plans. And so as we make goals for our year, all of our goals should be centered upon God and His will. What does God want? And so God may not really have a will about whether or not you put tires on your car. I'm going to drive them, you know. <laughs> I'm going to drive my car. They're slick. I'm not going to do anything until God tells me to do it, you know. God may not have a necessary will about the tires on your car, you know, about when you replace them necessarily. And you understand what I mean by that. But we in turn need to make plans and goals for this coming year. That's right and it's proper. But do not make your plans without consulting God, asking for wisdom, looking for provision. You know, I, I was, uh, uh, we needed something some years ago when we were uh, on deputation. And I told Joe, I said, I need this. I really need it bad. And I said, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. You know, and I thought, I'm just go ahead and buy this. And she said, why don't you pray about it? And I thought, what do I want to pray about it for? <laughs> you know, I'm just going to go get it. And it was, a, it was an expensive item. Um, I don't know, hundreds, maybe five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars or more. I don't know what it was. And so uh, she said, you really need to just pray about that. And I said, I, all right. You know, I mean, how can I deny praying? But seriously, I just want to go get it. You know, I just want to go get this thing. And so uh, I decided that I would pray about it, and I asked the Lord to provide this. And after praying about it, then the, a church called me on the phone and said, Hey, we, we were thinking that you may need this one item, and it was the item I, that I needed. And they said, We're going to give you the money for it. After that, another guy called me on the phone, a friend of mine that my, Joe and I had uh, discipled, he and his wife, many years ago. And, and he himself was a preacher at the time. And he called me and said, hey, Marty, he said, I was just thinking, you probably need, need this. He said, I'm going to send you the money so you can get it. A third person called me and said, I didn't talk to any of them. They all called. That was all on their own fruition. And so I ended up getting three of the same. No, I didn't. I, only, <laughs> I told the other ones no. I'd, and so uh, I took the money from the one church and I purchased the item I needed. So 
we didn't talk about buying tires for a car and that's a goal you need for this year. That's great. Pray about it. Consider God in the midst of it. But there's some goals that we make that can't be considered unless God is. We consider God in the process of it. And perhaps a career move. Or maybe even the idea of purchasing a home or or uh, maybe uh, it may come goals that you're setting that even regards uh, to your finances. And so don't be guilty of making plans and setting goals and not considering God. God needs to be the center. The fool said, I've got a lot of prosperity. I'm going to tear down my barns, build bigger barns, and I'm going to store it up and then I'm going to live off of it. Didn't consider God at all. A lot of people do that. You know, if he would have consulted God, I'm, I'm sure that God would have. And I know it's a parable. But if he would have consulted God, I'm sure God would have directed him a little differently than that. You know, as God didn't give to us so that we can hoard it, keep it, collect it, hold on to it. God gave to us so we can give it away. So we can help others. And there's nothing greater than we can use our resources with than to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. To assist with the spreading of the message of Jesus Christ. Certainly to help those ones who are poor, who are down and out and they need help. It's a fantastic tool that God uses to bring people to Jesus Christ as out of our generosity, the generosity of a church, of individuals. And so this fool in turn didn't consider God. He considered, he made a decision what was best for himself. Now when we make plans, we want to make plans as what's best for God. What is best for God? Secondly, look, if you will, in verse number 14. Verse 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life, even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanished away. The first mistake we make is that we, we just make plans without considering God. And there's nothing. And their goal was to get gain. They just wanted to prosper. And God's goal may not be to get gain. God's goal may be something different. They didn't consider it. Secondly, we see here the second mistake that James is pointing out for us is that they didn't consider, they weren't comprehending the uncertainty of life. Life is very short. And Scripture tells us that it's as a vapor. It's here for a little while. It's gone uh, and vanishes away. Look, if you will, a few verses of Scripture. First Chronicles chapter 29 First Chronicles chapter 29. Turn there. First Chronicles 29, verse number 15. Are you there? Say amen. Okay, now notice in verse 15 it says... For we are strangers before Thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. This is David's prayer. Notice how David, in turn, he, he makes this, he's making an admission of what we know to be true. We're just a stranger and a sojourner. You know, the songwriter said that this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. So with all of our goals that we set and our plans for this new year or any time, we want to be very, very focused. Not only God, but also how an uncertain life is. And life, if we're, if we're blessed, we may live to be in three score and ten, Job chapter eight, if you will, Job chapter eight. It's just a book or so over, a couple books over. We may live to our three score and ten, maybe a little bit longer, maybe less. But we understand that life has an ending point. You're not going to live in this physical world forever. You will die or be raptured. And so, as we make plans, we want to uh, consider that. Job chapter eight and verse number nine. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers. Verse 9. For we are but of yesterday, and, and know nothing, because our days upon earth 
are a shadow. Just a shadow. Psalms 102, just go forward a little bit more. Psalms 102, again we see that <clears throat> consistently through the Scriptures, we see the writers, they uh, made this point, kept this point very much before us. Psalms 102, verse number 3. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as a hearth. David here, again, writing, uh, and he in turn is just testing the fact that life is temporal. It's limited. Life in turn is, has a time, you know, a time, an end date, and it's something that you and I should keep in the forefront of our mind. Verse number 11, the same chapter of my days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. And so we look here, Luke chapter 12 and verse 19, this was the fool that we read a moment ago. He took no thought of the next day. That's what the scripture says. Jesus said this man took no thought. We know it's a parable. But Jesus is telling a parable that illustrates it's a heavenly truth that is using a realistic story. And we well know how easy it is for us to live today and not take thought of tomorrow. And making our plans and goals, we want to take plan, take thought of tomorrow. Um, my grandmother, she's, she's the best at this, honestly. I, she is something else. She, <laughs> I was over her house here last year, and I walked in. She said, Marty, I got something for you. And she handed me a few things. She said, this is something I was planning on giving to you when I die. And she, she writes on everything. Anything I've given her over the years, um, then she will take a, a permanent black marker and she writes on it. Marty, you know, 1198, you know, Christmas. And she'll put that on, the, on it. Well, all the things that I had given her, which sadly wasn't as much as I thought. <laughs> See, that day she had collected them all and she said, here, I'm giving all this back to you because I'm going to die and I, and I want to make sure they're taken care of. And so she, she is, you know, they, I mean, uh, through her house, she has gotten rid of many things. Family albums, which was probably the treasure of my grandmother's house, was to go to her house and sit on the floor and pull out all the family albums. Many of them, not all of them, she still has quite a few, but I would say more than half of them she's given away. She's determined which the family needs to get them. She made a family album of that mostly that was of my brother and I, and the family album of my cousins, uh, Heather and Joey, and then one of my father, and one of my aunt, Connie, and then one of you know, her and my grandfather, one of her family, one of his family. She has albums like that. And so she's determined now who gets the albums, and she gave albums away to, to persons. So she still has some. But it's just interesting how much my grandma, she, she knows I'm, I'm dying, and so there's, I'm going to make sure I take care of these things. I don't know that she's really doing it for a spiritual reason, but as a Christian, uh, and my grandmother is a Christian, but as a Christian, I need in making all of my goals and plans to be mindful. I'm not going to live forever. Life is going to end. I need to make my plans and goals accordingly. You know, I, I've heard some crazy stories and seen some things, things that people decide to do that I just don't quite grasp. I mean, at a, at a time in their life when it would not appear they're going to live very much longer, uh, just from the natural sense that they just break ground to do very big, grandiose things that they're not able to finish. And so, you know, make your plans, but make them accordingly. Life is short and temporal. And so, therefore, I'm investing in heaven and not upon earth. And so I want to be very mindful, very, very mindful of that. Proverbs 27, look there if you will, just another verse. This will be the last one on this point. Proverbs 27, verse number 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And so again, the writers of scriptures just consistently told us stories, or really gave us verses over and over again to remind us that life is short, and life is like a vapor, life is like the burning of a fire, and so make your plans accordingly. You know, you know we, we in turn procrastinate living for God, and procrastinate doing things for God, and make big plans to do temporal things that really have nothing to do about God. 
And so we want to take in consideration about our life. I've, um, you know, I'd, I'd love to have a big house. And uh, that would be great. Problem is, is that I should have got a big house about 15 years ago. And I've, when I was pastoring, I noticed this trend with uh, people. When I was pastoring in California, I noticed this trend with people that, that they, would, they would work and labor and, and raise their family and so forth, and they would get themselves a nice big house when their child was about 17 years old. And then they have a big house, and everybody's moved out. And, and it's obviously accommodating for when they come back home, but as we all know, they, they, they come back home less and less. And I'm in a stage now to where they're coming back, some are leaving or some are coming back home. But, I, but I'm at a place now that, that the idea of having a big house uh, that would actually have rooms for all the kids to sleep in and all that sort of thing, um, well, it's, I just didn't plan. I didn't plan soon enough for it. You know, it's, and so when you're making plans, that's what I'm referring to. Make plans considering. Don't, don't, don't trick yourself and deceive yourself to think something is true that isn't true. Um, your life is short, and it's like a vapor. Number three, mistake number three. Let's look at this. Uh, you're back in, Prov uh, back in James. Turn back there, James, in chapter number four. I think I'm going to finish early here today. We'll just take off and leave the kids. They're not out. I'm leaving going home. So James chapter f uh, 4 and verse number, oh, let's see, 15 says, For what you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now we rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is vain, is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So what is, the, what is a, another mistake that's often made in regards to making plans, and especially this year? You know, we're talking about this year, making plans for this year. People, they, they postpone until the future what they really should do today. Now, you, you and I all, if, if we in turn would be serious and honest with ourselves, we know there are some things that we need to take care of. <laughs> and, and, and I'm talking more probably in regards to spiritual things or relationship issues. It's easy to make plans to get, you know, to acquire possessions. But, but too often we, we'll really put that off. But we'll put off growing an area in our life for Christ or put off, you know, repairing or fixing things. And, you know, as far as relationships that perhaps we need to, we postpone those things and we put them off. And so here he says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him is sin. And so... You probably have a good you have probably have a good unction as what you need to do, um, and that's a good place to start with plans for this year. And it's it's really easy to jump past all of those and to make plans to do things and goals to do things and ignore and avoid and postpone and procrastinate those things that you need to take care of. Maybe you have yourself in some debt. And uh, so I really need to take care of that debt. I need to take care of it one day. But you in turn said, I also need, I also really it's something I want to have as a jacuzzi. It'll help me with my arthritis. And so you set a goal to have jacuzzi. And the jacuzzis are, are comical. I mean, I see those all the time. People throw them away. I've had 10 people since I've been back in West try to give me a jacuzzi. And I think all the money involved in putting in a jacuzzi, buying it and labor, building the deck, you know, all of that, putting it in. And uh, I don't know, it must not be all cracked up what it's supposed to be. But people give it, if you have a jacuzzi, I don't know, don't, so don't, I'm not preaching against you, okay? But, so here you are in debt, and you're not, you're struggling to pay, you have high interest on the debt, and yet you really want a jacuzzi, and so you jump past your debt, which you know you really ought to take care of, and you decide to buy yourself a jacuzzi, and you build a deck, and so forth, and you put more, you know, put more money into all of this, and this is what, this is what James is, is referring to. You know what you ought to do, what's good to do. Focus on taking care of that first. Don't skip over it. Occupy yourself with doing something. That in turn is good, but it isn't what's important, what's a priority in your life. And so you have a whole year, a whole year this year, to better organize your life, to repair relationships, 
to you know, set up uh, treasures in heaven, to make yourself and develop yourself as a Christian, to maybe acquire things that you need to acquire, uh, just so that your life is is a little more orderly in the way. Maybe you need to get a car. Maybe you 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 want to take a vacation, plan an anniversary trip. All those things are great. Make plans, but you want to make these plans and consider God. You want to make sure you're not averting, you're not avoiding that which is good, and you also want to make sure you make your plans considering considering the future how short and temporal life is. And so we can put off so easily everything and turn not take care of what we should take care of. And I've, I've heard it said so many times as I've uh, been in the deathbed with people, how they've said, I just have so many regrets. I wish I would have spent time with my kids. I wish that I would have uh, done this. wish I would have saved this or done that, fixed this, built that. Whatever. I've heard it so many times. Life of regrets. And their life was full of plans and busyness. The problem was, is that it wasn't, they didn't make the mistake of making plans that didn't consider God, or maybe making plans that didn't consider their future, or maybe made plans not considering what was best to do. And so we made goals this year. Let's make some goals, some good goals, that, um, that are honoring to God and that will help motivate us, encourage us, and we can look back at the end of this year and say, man, that was a good year. I mean, it was good. I was able to work on these things, and God gave me victory with those things. I was able to accomplish it. Okay? Look at this. Six minutes till. And none of you will thank me for it. I know it. So I'm going to go to the back door. You're going to stand here and just walk by and say, I'm letting you out early. I mean, six minutes. I'm like, they, just think how much work you can get done at the house preparing food. You need to eat. Warm enough your, your leftovers. Okay, let's go ahead and stand and we'll be dismissed for prayer tonight. Six o'clock, we'll be back. Our Father, we are grateful and we pray that we would have a very uh, sober and solemn spirit as we look to this year and we'll make good plans and organize ourselves. Maybe it's for retirement. Maybe it's fixing problems or fixing and repairing things that are broken in our house that we've left undone. Maybe, Lord, is in regards to gift or calling or ministry work that we have just procrastinated and procrastinated and we've avoided. But, Lord, help us, I pray, to look at our lives and to do the very highest and the best things, things that we can do with our life this year that would honor you and that would resemble, represent that we are good stewards of all that you've given us. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.